What's up Lazy Dog fam? Hope everybody out there is having a wonderful day. Tell you what, it's starting to feel a little bit like fall here in South Georgia. Now I know to a lot of you, 84 degrees doesn't sound anything like fall. But 84 degrees is a lot better than 94 degrees. And it's starting to cool off around here. Starting to feel a little crispness in the air. And I like it. But I was just thinking, it's been a long time since we did a garden tour. I think it's maybe been two or three weeks or so. So I need to catch you guys up to date on what's going on in all 10 of our garden plots. And at the end of this video, I've got some more hot sauce I need to bottle. Okay, so let's start out here in our biggest plot. We've got our three rows of okri here, some okri trials going on. I think six different varieties planted here. I've been keeping the bottom of these pruned off. So it's a lot easier to pick starting to get some really good production out of these now i'll do a entire video comparing all these varieties pretty soon now that we've um, started to get some good production here but very interesting to see the different kind of growth habit between all these varieties some of these are a lot taller like this alabama red oak tree right here some of these want to branch out really bad like that variety there which i can't uh, i need my piece of paper i can't remember which one that is that heirloom fat okri on the end is yet to produce any okri it's just big tall plants and then this variety here whatever that is i'll tell you when we do that video has been my favorite so far but a lot of differences here between all these varieties well some taste differences some uh pod toughness differences and uh, we'll be sure to cover all that on a video soon. And beside that oak tree trial there, we've got this big blank space. This is where we had that safflower cover crop that didn't pan out for us. We showed you that on a previous video. I came in here and scalped this with the lawnmower and it, it killed most everything back. There's still a few little pieces of crabgrass in there that I need to take care of. So I'm going to probably wheel hoe this tomorrow and just kind of work on my weed seed bank a little bit. Just do a little shallow cultivation once a week try to get that weed seed bank down and then we'll probably end up putting a cool season cover crop here but we got it scalped down and that scalping with a mower will kill most of the stuff that was in there but there are some persistent weeds in there we're going to have to get after with a wheel hoe and then right over here beside that we've got one of our two fall pumpkin plots so we have also intercropped with a cover crop of iron clay peas now this one doesn't look as good as the other one i'll show you in a minute but it's hanging in there we're starting to get some production here from these uh, tug river kushaw squash there's several of them in there pretty good looking one there some of these plants here don't look that hot but they never really looked that hot from the beginning i didn't get very good germination in here compared to the other plot and um I don't know maybe it's something with this plot here but at least we've got the soil covered here this is kind of plan a and plan b all in one plot here so if the pumpkins for some reason don't end up hardly doing anything at least we've got a good nitrogen fixing cover crop growing here and we've got good ground cover good weed suppression there these igor pumpkins or igor pumpkins they just look all right they don't look great I don't know if I've seen any pumpkins yet in there, but it is what it is. If it doesn't pan out, we still got a good cover crop here. So not all is lost. Over here on the other side of the barn, we've got this somewhat or mostly blank plot here. We've got our arch panel trellis there. Those beans that we grew in the spring and into the summer, they're finally crispy enough. I may try to uh, get the torch again. I believe they would burn now. And I was going to plant some gourds on there for fall, but I just can't get them to germinate in the greenhouse. Maybe I just needed to direct seed them. I thought about coming in here and trying to squeeze in some cucumbers just to have something on there. But I don't know if I have enough time at this point. So we'll see. I may end up just cover cropping along the base of that right there. Over here in this space where our first planting of oak tree was, this is where I'm going to be putting those flowers that I've got growing in the greenhouse now. Some bachelor button some calendula, some marigolds. I've already got this main line right there, drip hookup. So all I need to do is run a couple drip lines and that's where I'm gonna be putting those flower transplants. And then this oak tree right here, this Ruiz oak tree, I'm just letting it all go to seed right now. 
besides the um, Louisiana green velvet, this is probably my favorite, second favorite variety that I grew this year. So I want to save plenty of seeds from this. So I haven't harvested, I haven't really touched it in uh, quite a few weeks. Just letting it max out on pod production, make some big pods there. Some of it has fallen over because it just gets top heavy when it doesn't have any or many lateral branches like that. But uh, we're just letting all these puppies here just do their thing, go to seed, mature out. We should have plenty of this seed right here to plant in the next few years or so. And then this here is fall pumpkin plot number two, which looks a lot better than the first one I showed you. Still got those peppers on the end there. I've kind of let those go a little bit. We pick a few every now and then, but the pumpkins have started climbing all over them. So, you know, we'll get what we can from those, but just kind of haven't paid those much attention lately. So this is the uh, polar bear, polar bear, uh, white giant pumpkins in here. And these look so much better than in that other plot. And our plan with intercropping with iron clay peas is working wonderful at this point. You can see the pumpkins just climb all over those peas there now some of the first kind of initial growth of these plants if you look towards the middle of the row there you can see a little bit of sickness there and that's to be expected with all the rain and humidity we've had but all the new growth like this here looks really really good and it's putting on a lot of new growth some of it is coming out this way towards me some of it is going over that way towards the peppers a nice little stand of vegetation over there and uh, really good weed suppression with the iron clay peas in here and I'm just really really digging this way of growing pumpkins now we'll have to see what happens you know what eventual harvest we get off these guys I have noticed a few small pumpkins in there we'll just have to see what we get but it's pretty known fact that it's really really tough to grow fall pumpkins down here in the south but we may have done it. We'll just have to see what we get here. Either way, this intercropping with the iron clay peas is something I think I'm gonna do from here on out, whether I'm growing pumpkins in the spring or in the fall. It's just working really, really well. The timing is a little tricky on it. So you gotta let those pumpkin plants get established, let them start you know, making some vines and stuff, and even almost kind of pinning the vines to the middle of the row a little bit so they can get going good then come in there plant your iron clay peas and the pumpkins will climb all over them i'm even thinking about experimenting doing this technique with some watermelons come next year i think it would work equally as well with watermelons you let me know what you think but so far considering how tough fall pumpkins are down here this is going really well and now over here to the six spots we call the dream garden. We'll start out right here where we had those knuckle hole peas and we showed you a few videos ago. We got our new chicken tractor out here. We got our chickens in there. They're enjoying life, enjoying all that nice forage. Not really eating a lot of their chicken food. They've just been enjoying foraging. Now this looks a lot different than the last time you saw it. I had, I didn't want to, but I had to come in here and mow this just because those chicks are small and if I pick up that pin too high, you know, they'll run out the bottom. And that pea foliage was just so tall, it was hard to move the pin without picking it up too high. You know, that won't be a problem once the chickens get bigger. But right now, it was a little bit of an issue. So I did have to come in here and mow these peas. I mowed them as high as I could mow them with my lawnmower. There's still some leaves, still some vegetation out there. Still some good organic matter on the ground. Still some peas. Plenty for those guys to eat. So we just took them off this little spot earlier today and moved them over there. They've been right here. That's the first spot we had them on. So when I mowed, the chicken tractor was sitting right there. Um, so that's coming back a little bit. But it's not ideal. I would have liked to have left all that vegetation there. I just couldn't move it safely with all that in place. Like I said, as, they, as the chickens get bigger, it won't be an issue. But either way we're getting some good fertilization from those guys they're enjoying that leftover vegetation there and this is probably one of the plots we'll be planting some of our cool weather crops right across from that is our sweet tater plot here we showed you a video or so ago us digging those georgia jets we got those underneath the barn i came in here yesterday 
and we needed this heel right here which i believe is the murasaki variety so we'll probably be digging that one tomorrow once we dig that one i'll go ahead and weed eat this heel which is the buncho puerto rico variety and then when we dig that one i'll weed eat this vardaman variety here still got some of this amazing blue ridge kale going right there it's the craziest thing i've ever seen growing kale you know especially like a perennial at this point and then we've got the nc state variety and i'm gonna have to look back at uh my video published dates to see when those will be ready to harvest but they're a month or so behind these other ones here we're just trying to knock these out you know dig a couple rows a week and get them all harvested in our no-till plot here we've got pieces of it that look really good with the cover crop and we got pieces of it that just are absolutely infested with pigweed to the point where i think i'm about to ditch it i was going to try to wait till some of these sunflowers bloomed so i threw a few sunflowers in the mix when i planted these uh texas cream peas soybeans and the safflower just threw together a mixture for this plot and it's looking pretty good over on that end right in here we didn't get very good cover crop germination and we got some awesome pigweed germination so i think what i'm gonna have to do is just come in here and mow this and tarp it and um, i don't know how long i'll tarp it for but i'll probably um, mow it i might wheel hoe it i'll probably mow it tarp it let the tarp sit on a few weeks wheel hoe it tarp it again and just work on this weed seed bank because that is a big big pigweed issue we got in there and uh, we just keep trying to grow vegetables in there it's going to get worse and worse so we're going to have to use the tarp and work on our weed seed bank there a little bit get this thing back manageable and then in this plot here we've got our glass gym corn which doesn't look that great at all i have had some intense intense worm pressure you can see there where they've been gnawing on it and uh, i've sprayed them several times probably need to spray them again i don't know if it's just the climate or the weather this time of year usually I don't have this bad an issue with fall corn fall corn you have some worm pressure but usually not this bad maybe it's just this variety but it has been tough I mean we're already starting to see we come down here this one here is tasseling out and it ain't even maybe four foot tall and that's not a good sign especially with a you know field corn kind of variety like this should get much taller before tasseling so the worms slowed the growth i don't think it was a fertilizer issue it looks pretty green just haven't had good luck with this variety so far maybe it's something i did maybe it's the variety who knows we'll just have to see what we get there over here is where we had our robust popcorn we showed you shelling some of that a video or so ago that did really well i've since came in here mowed this down pulled up the drip tape got this cultivated and this is where we're going to make an attempt to <clears throat> and this is where we're going to make an attempt to plant some fall taters probably do that on the next video so i've got plenty of space here probably going to give myself plenty of room between those rows you know i'm not going to plant a ton of fall taters it's just an experiment but probably do the rows four or five feet apart give us plenty of dirt to heal with and uh we'll throw a couple rows in here got the soil somewhat fluffy which taters like and uh, we'll see what happens and then over here at the end of the dream garden we've got our cover crop oasis so i've told you before this is so far my favorite warm season mix here the sorghum sedan grass and these red ripper peas i went with the red ripper peas instead of the iron clay peas because i thought the red ripper peas since they are a climbing variety wouldn't get smothered out as much as the iron clay peas usually do when the sorghum sedan grass gets tall and that has worked out look at all those pea vines right there so they are climbing their way up through there they're not getting extinguished by the tall sorghum sedan grass there and this is working perfectly things don't always go as planned but i sure do like it when a plan comes together so We've got a ton of vegetation here. I thought I saw a few pea sprouts on here the other day. So it might be time to extinguish this one. Usually I would wait till that sorghum sedan grass starts flowering a little bit. But I haven't seen any of that yet. But there's so much vegetation and so much biomass here. This stuff is five or six foot tall. And uh, 
just loaded down with vegetation we'll just have to mow this on the highest setting this may be the next destination for the chickens right here they'll love all that green material that's on the ground after we mow this and right beside that one we've got the same thing just a good bit behind so here we've got the sorghum sedan grass the red ripper peas there are a few sunflowers thrown in there here and there uh, i don't know if those will get up and going or not i can't really identify any sunflower plants right now but maybe they'll show themselves at some point but this is why we plant it thick right here nice mat of vegetation there this will eventually look like that now this looks a little yellow i don't know if it's because the rain or maybe a fertility issue but what i did on that one over there the tall one and what i do on some of my cover crop plantings is when they get about this tall i'll run a good bit of fish emulsion through the injector using the overhead or tripod sprinkler i've got and just kind of feed that soil a little bit and uh, that eventually kind of green it on up and um, feed all those microbes and uh, all that soil biology there works pretty good run that fish emulsion through the tripod so we may do that next time uh, we get a little bit of break in the rain and i give this a little food but i'm liking the coverage i'm seeing so far so our summer break in the garden it's not really a break but just a little bit of a slowdown is almost coming to an end we'll be ramping up start planting a lot of stuff here pretty soon once those transplants get ready in the greenhouse probably got you know a few more weeks here of not a lot going on in the garden and then there'll be a ton of stuff going on fall garden is a very very busy time around here so i hope you enjoyed that walk around the 10 plots now let's go inside and bottle some of this hot sauce so the first batch of hot sauce we made, and we did this on video, we used our Tabasco peppers from the garden. And then we added some of the brine and some apple cider vinegar to it. And this is what we got. Now, that sauce had a good bit of heat to it. It's pretty hot, not just, I can't take it hot, but on the hotter end of the hot scale. And I think I put a little too much xanthan gum in there. I had it a little too thick. It wouldn't come out of this uh, little hole in this bottle here very easily. So what I did was as I have used some of this, I had it down to about right here. I topped it off with a little more vinegar and kind of shook it up. And now it, it's a better consistency and it kind of, you know, dampen that heat a little bit and it's just right now so we're kind of still figuring everything out so we did that with tabascos today i've got these that i've been fermenting now these tabascos i just fermented about a week week and a half these i almost kind of forgot about them uh, in the closet in my office there but these have been sitting for about two to three weeks still should be fine should be nice and fermented at this point these are santa fe grand peppers and i had some on the vine that were some were yellow, some were orange, some were red. I'm hoping the color of the sauce is a nice kind of orange color. These aren't near as hot, or I don't say near as hot. These aren't as hot as the Tabascos, and they got a little more flavor to them in my opinion. So this should be a really nice flavorful sauce. I think I'm gonna add more vinegar to this batch than I did this to get a little, uh, get a little less thick so it pours out of the bottle a little easier. So let's go for it. So I've got two and a half, something like that, jars of these Santa Fe Grands here. I got more of these than I had of the Tabasco, so we may get more jars of hot sauce. So the first thing I want to do is just strain these guys here. And we want to save our little pebble there. And then we want to save this brine here. I had somebody comment on one of our social media pages that if you don't use all this brine for making the hot sauce, that this makes great uh, brine for soaking some chicken in before you throw it on the grill. So we might have to try that. Get these others poured in here. There we go. Just right. That's about all my strainer can hold. You see that garlic in there. It's nice and fermented too. We'll uh, blend that all together here in a minute. And what I'm going to do, what I didn't do last time, is I'm going to give these a little bit of a rinse here. And uh, maybe make them a little less kind of funky fermented taste. And we'll still have that nice fermented flavor in there. But uh, we're going to rinse these off before we put them in the blender. 
Okay, I got those rinsed. We want to save that brine there. That's some good stuff. So I'm going to go ahead and add all my peppers here to the ninja. Try not to make too big of a mess. Got that garlic in there too, which always gives everything some good flavor. And I know from last time that we will at least need some liquid in there to get these things blended up. So I'm going to add a little bit of brine here. And I bought this big thing of apple cider vinegar at Sam's. So we're going to go ahead and add a good bit of that in there. So let's just add a little bit of time until we get the consistency like we want it. But going with a higher proportion of vinegar as opposed to brine this time. And get that blended. See what it looks like. All right, let's check that. It's a little thick, so we probably use a little more liquid. I guess if we get too much liquid in here, get too liquidy, we could always thicken it back up with the xanthan gum. Let's try it now. I think that's about right. So now we're going to take this and we're going to strain it off because we don't want all those seeds and that pulp in our hot sauce. Then we'll take a spoon and kind of work all that liquid through that strainer. Now I can already tell by the smell of this, a lot more fruity, less spice on it. This isn't going to be near as hot, I don't think. That Tabasco sauce was. That's probably good right there. And that's what we're left with there. Definitely a little better color on that. I won't say better, but a little lighter color on that. A little more orange. Oh man, that right there. <coughs> Ooh, got a little bit of heat to it. Man, that is good. Really, really good flavor on that. All right, so we got our hot sauce bottles here, also known as Woozy bottles, and the, I had to buy some more of these. The kit I bought this time, pretty neat, on Amazon, came with this little, nice little funnel there, metal funnel with a little bigger hole in it, so that should be easier to pour up. Also come with these little shrink wrap things for the top. I'm sure Brooklyn's got some hair device we can use to kind of wrap those on there. that make it look nice for a gift or something like that, and then also these little labels here so i thought that was pretty cool you can buy just the bottles but i went ahead and got this kit this time i'll put a link below um, to amazon where i got this you can pick this up if you want one let's get the tops off these we got to take these little plastic caps off so we can pour in there get our funnel on there and we'll start filling them up Oh yeah, that works so much better than that old plastic white funnel I had last time. That looks to be like just the perfect consistency there. Put our cap back on there. And there we go. So we end up getting about, let's see, five. I got a little left over there. Not enough for a whole bottle, but at least five bottles from two and a half mason jars full of Santa Fe peppers. All right, all right, all right. And it isn't official to it has an official Lazy Dog Farm sticker on it. And these little labels that came with that kit with a little chalk pen, that's pretty cool. So we can write on there what kind of peppers it was. So early impressions, I definitely like this batch a lot better than the first batch. Not that the first batch was bad, but I like this one a lot better. So things I did different. One, I rinsed the peppers. This sauce doesn't taste quite as fermenty, funky. Not that I don't like the fermenty, funky flavor, but this just has a little less of it. So it tastes a little more like, you know, your traditional hot sauce. The other thing I did was I added less brine and more apple cider vinegar. So last time I was pretty much equal parts of brine and apple cider vinegar. This, it was probably more like a a three to one vinegar to brine ratio. And that makes it a little less funky as well. 
the peppers. So these Santa Fe grand peppers, they're not as hot as those Tabasco peppers and they also just have a lot more flavor to them. Those orange and red peppers, and this particular variety has kind of a citrusy feel to it. So I really, really like these. It's not as hot, a lot more flavor. I didn't add the xanthan gum this time, so it's a little more watery, so to say, but uh, not too bad. I think I got the consistency about like I like it there. The last batch I got a little too thick. Now I may still try more of the Tabascos, but I'm thinking about taking a, a fruity sweet pepper, maybe like those heatless habaneros we have, and mixing that with the Tabascos and trying that and seeing how that comes out. But I think I got some more Santa Fe grand peppers on the vine. I think I'll definitely make some more of this and kind of give some away during the holidays. This is my winter so far. We'll keep trying different recipes, see which ones we like. If you've got a go-to pepper or go-to pepper combination that you like for homemade hot sauce, definitely let me know about that in the comments below. And if you enjoyed this video, make sure to subscribe, ring the bell, like, and share. And we'll see you next time right here at Lazy Dog Farm. Old farewell mm -hmm. By the beauty of your life